So two big court uh, verdicts in a sense that we're looking at today, one of course on marital rape, the other on sedition by the Supreme Court. Joining us now is former Supreme Court Justice, uh, Justice Deepak Gupta. Uh, uh, Justice Gupta, thank you for joining us. Let me first ask you on the split verdict on marital rape by the Delhi High Court. Uh, just moments ago, we also received the sort of detailed order. And, you know, we have Justice Shakhtar who has said that, uh, you know, it is important to strike down this exception for marital rape, saying, uh, you know, that uh, women need to be empowered. They are our equal half, as he puts it, our delightfully uh, better half. Uh, and uh, you have Justice Hari Shankar on the other hand, who says that it's not rape. Uh, if it happens in a marriage, uh, which I ha have to say as a woman has come as a bit of a shock in the 21st century. But can I ask you, uh, how do you see this issue, sir? Uh, well, uh, Nidhi, first of all, as far as my personal opinion goes, I feel uh, I support Justice Shatner's uh, judgment totally. In fact, uh, sitting with Justice Madan Lopur in a case called Independent Thought, we had for the first time held that if the girl was below 18 and but above 15 and uh, she was the wife, then it would be rape whether she had consented or not. That was judgment delivered by us about three years back. And that, at that time, we were not dealing with marital rape. But I strongly believe that when a woman says no, it means no, whether she's married to the man or not. Having yeah. said that, let's not brush aside what Justice Hari Shankar has said. It was, a, it was a matter which troubled me when I was dealing with the other judgment. Because we, his argument is not that he supports this. He says whether it is in the domain of the courts to decide such issues or whether it is for parliament to decide. You see, there, was a, there is an issue in that. That's a very legal issue as to whether our courts now stepping into the field of legislation by deciding that this will be an offence. See, you are creating an offense in a, in a certain way. Right, but, but we, by, we probably by need holding, the courts to do that, but the legislature that, no, by, doesn't. Uh, no, that is, so uh, one can't brush aside that argument. I'm not saying, I don't agree with it. Personally, I don't agree with it, but it's a very strong argument. I wouldn't brush it aside and say that is, you see, we, I have not gone through both the judgments in detail, but I'm, from what little I've seen of Justice Hari Shankar's judgment, it is not that he says that He's, he's only saying about the jurisdiction of the court to hold that this uh, explanation is not whether it can is constitutional or not. He says that's not within our term. Are you but saying that's, that's, that's because you would have to create a new offence? Because it's not that the courts don't intervene and interpret law. They do that all the time. Uh, they, they lay down guidelines, they lay down conditions and, on how laws should be interpreted, even sedition, by the way, which I'm going to talk to you about. So is this only because technically it would mean the creation of a new offence since at the moment there is an exception legally given to husbands? I think that's the only thing what Justice Hari Shankar has said. He has not supported it otherwise from what I've read of the judgment. And nobody, you know, frankly, nobody can support, uh, I mean, marital rape in today's day and age when women are have the same rights as men. Why should they not have the right to say no to sex in marriage also? You can't, they, you can't be forced to have, she's not, a woman is not chattel, she's not property that the husband can treat her as he wants, uh, you know, at his own whim of fancy. Absolutely. Uh, on, on the sedition uh, uh, issue also, uh, uh, Justice Gupta, uh, how historic is this, this move by the Supreme Court to actually keep the law in abeyance now until the government decides on it? It's taken a pretty strong stand today. It's a very, very, I mean, it's a very welcome move. It's a very strong stand. And I think it does send a message to the court, both in this marital rape case and uh, this case, uh, sedition case, when they, go, when they, uh, when they feel that they're before a bench which is not comfortable, which is not very, uh, doesn't think their way. Then the government suddenly says, we want time to uh, look into the matter ourselves, even the marital rape matter, they said that. I mean, these cases have been pending for years. This government has been in power for since 2014. Why do they wake up at the last minute to say that we look into the matter? If, well, if they want to look into the matter, I have nothing wrong. Uh, they have two months to look into the matter. The Supreme Court will hear the matter after the vacations, the, about two, two and a half months. If they uh, look into the matter and withdraw the law of sedition, well, then the court will not have to answer the question. But if they don't look into the matter, they don't withdraw it or make a very 
you know, yesterday the law minister hinted that they're not going to withdraw this provision, they may put some safeguards. Now then, again, the court will have to look into all this. Absolutely. I was going to ask you about that because it's not as if safeguards weren't there in the sense that there were very clear Supreme Court judgments on this which said that there had to be an actual incitement to violence to warrant a sedition charge. Now, successive governments have ignored that and we've seen actually sedition cases rising exponentially in the last eight years or so. Uh, so, therefore... Is it, in your view, that the sedition law needs to go, period? You can't really have safeguards and ifs and buts anymore. I, I have been, I mean, not now, I've been strongly of this view always, that in a democracy where, and where, you know, dissent is the very essence of democracy. If I do not have the right to criticize the government, then there is no democratic uh, polity in the country. And if we have to be a democracy, then there has to be, uh, uh, there has to be criticism of the powers that be. But incitement to violence, these can be offences. But the manner in which the sedition law is framed, you see, what happens is the court in Kedarnath Singh's case laid down certain guidelines. Later in Balwan Singh's case also guidelines were laid. But the police officials just look at the letter of the law that it creates hatred or contempt against the government or it, uh, it has creates disaffection of the, against the government and therefore we're booking the person. I mean, and it's used nearly across the political spectrum by all parties when they are in power. And once they're out of power, they all shout that we want to have it abolished. But the minute they come back into power, then they all want to even make it more strict. Can I ask you uh, what you feel about the law minister's comment today after this order came that courts should respect the government, we respect the courts, that we have a clear demarcation and boundary and that the Lakshman Rekha should not be crossed by anyone? I, I really haven't read these remarks in detail in what context has been said. But if the law minister is uh, hinting that uh, the Supreme Court crossed the Lakshman Rekha, then I would disagree with him and I would also say that the government itself has invited this deal. Okay. By trying to push, they could have argued the matter. The bench, you know, instead of arguing the matter, they said they filed an affidavit that you should not hear the matter. Why, why did they, did the government not cross the Lakshman Rekha when it said, uh, when it told the Supreme Court, please don't hear the matter, we'll decide. Well, if you don't want the matter to be heard, then you should be ready, you know, you should give some concrete deadlines. If they had given some concrete deadlines, yes, within as within two months we'll decide what has to be done. I'm quite sure that the Supreme Court would have, uh, may have given them the time without passing this order. But they were making vague statements, not very general statements, not giving a firm deadline. The Supreme Court had nothing, no other option but to uh, pass the order which it passed today. And I think it's a very welcome move by the Supreme Court. It tells the powers may that be that you must not take, you know, you must take criticism with broader shoulders than you take, you know, you can't be oversensitive when you're in power. Well, Justice Deepak Gupta, thank you. Strong words there from you. Thank you very much for joining us on NDTV. Thank you. Thank you very much.